<laughs> I'd love to play Mr. Beast heads up. Yeah, I'd love to play sure dreams. Do. I didn't know that like signs and paper and stuff never are static they in any dream. Then shit got serious about a lot of things, right? Like <laughs> so all of a sudden it's cheating scandals, it's sexual harassment cases, yeah. it's right on the bottom. Like I'm gonna outplay the bot. I don't know. Like, I always <laughs> yeah, yeah. thought I'm beating these bots. I didn't like. I, it well, if never, it's a true bot, most you know? bots. My understanding of most bots online, they're not that good. So everyone's yeah. a master of holdem. Like yeah, PLO, yeah. you go even in Vegas, like it's treated with such disrespect here. Yeah. <laughs> Three games, four games, two places got it. Disrespect. Every Hello, Poker YouTube. I am Jared Alderman. Welcome to the GTO Wizard Podcast. You may be asking yourself, what's the GTO Wizard Podcast? Who is this person? Why has he been asked to do this podcast? The answers to all of these questions are a mystery to me. But I can tell you, in this podcast, at our best, hopefully, you'll get to know some people across poker in a way you didn't before. And at our worst, you might just get some good old fashioned entertainment. Today, I'll be speaking with Joey Ingram. Many of you know, Joey is the head of his legion, as he calls them online. He is a former PLO player. He's done everything from commentary to interviews to eight hour long investigations into the poker drama we all care far too much about. Without further ado, I bring you Joey Ingram. Feeling it now. It was a mistake doing the burger. I'm I'm very stuffed, but I have I'm going coffee and I guess I'm doing beer. So I'm gonna go stimulant and. So you're and going burger, burger, beer. Burger, 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 beers and and. There's no B. There's no B coffee word. Perfect. Yeah. You have coffee too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I have coffee. I'm rocking. I'm rocking the. Psycho. Bro. Oh my God. Okay. Dude, there's you can never get you can never get uh, too many um, substances. I guess that's true. Depends what they are. I wasn't, I mean, it's late. I'm like a, I'm an early person. So, but I, I had this burger uh, that was super fucking good, but I had a, it are was. Are you going to talk about the burger? Sure. Yeah, I had a good bur <laughs> Where good. was the burger from? It's from a, I don't even remember. It's like, uh, what's it called? I don't know. That's not an interesting conversation. You can promote the burger. I can pro promote the burger place. It was good though. It's like a local place. It's a local place here. Someone Shout recommended. Out the burger place. What do you mean? Shout out to them. Wait, you never wait. know. Maybe they'll yeah, see right. it. They might see it on TikTok. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. They might see a clip. They might see a clip. Let's see it here. It was Stay Tuned Burgers. Stay Tuned Burgers. Listen, stay Tuned Burgers. Stay Tuned Burgers out here in Vegas. Shout Stay Tuned Burgers. Make sure you check them out. You're in town. And uh, mention the Legion. You get 25% off. So. Make it mention the Legion. What do you? What is your role in the Legion? What, what do you? What do you call yourself? Like, are you captain? Are you? Because my role, the Legion. I got. There's no title titles in the Legion. It's just like I'm just. I I can't kind all of men like, are equal. Everybody's equal in the Legion. It's, it's, yeah. it's a communist Legion. <laughs> I don't know what it is, really. I mean, there's no real def definition of what it is now. It's just like a group of people that are fired up. And uh, and yeah, I don't know. Just You never know who's in the Legion. I meet a lot of people. Some old women are in the Legion. Some 80-year-old women I meet sometimes. They say, oh, I'm Legion, Poppy. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what? I'm telling you, man. I got young, old, everybody. I met so many different people that say they're they're like, I'm, I'm in the Legion. You know, yeah. Like my fan base, they call it, they like to say they're the Legion. So yeah, because like, I was doing your I was doing your intro bef as as one does before the conversation, and I was like, what do I? What's your role? I, I think I said you're like captain of the Legion or something, which we can we can take that out. We well, I mean, I kind of captain of Legion. I mean, yeah. I don't mind that title. I'm yeah. about to start something up called the. Uh, uh, it's an experiment. I'm doing an experiment, I'm trying to try some different ideas here. I'm do do uh, <laughs> Legion headquarters. Legion headquarters. So it's basically because like I really want to have a uh, I really want to have a. a, a club or like sure. a place people can go the legion can go like the soho house is like an idea of where have you contemplated a tree house um a tree house yeah i definitely want to do a tree house <laughs> yeah. for sure i want a place they can hang out right i'm like we're gonna the fucking legion go hang out have a good time a casino a dinner a nightclub stuff yeah. like that yeah. so i'm kind of to do something uh you know plus i want to put my content i'm, I'm, I'm kind of like don't have a place for my content anymore like a home yeah, so I kind of want to just build my own like infrastructure, build my own community, and make content just for my community, not post on Twitter. Yeah, because like Twitter, you can't really like say much on Twitter these days. Yeah, it's fucking people are crazy on there. You know, I don't even want to like I don't. Who knows who's reading? I don't. Why would I want all these random people to be reading my yeah my content? Like, I, there's some content I just want to write about, talk about, post about. Yeah. Maybe my research. I do a lot of research about everything I'm working on. So maybe share like inside of the things I'm working on with investing or with content or with business, and then. 
Yeah. I think people will find that valuable. So, um, and if not, you know, maybe they follow along. Right. But yeah. I mean, it's more, it's like owning your audience a bit more, right? Like you don't want to like rely on other like social yeah. media. Especially and when stuff. you see how YouTube treats people, Twitter treats people yeah. like Elon Musk came in, just bought the thing, changed everything around. So yeah. I decided I got to get more serious about yeah. what I'm doing because who knows how much longer this internet's going to last where it'll be like it is yeah. where you can make a video together. And all of a sudden maybe a million people can see a highlight of that moment. And right now there's just a huge arbitrage in that. So I decided I better like take this more seriously while it's here before any sort of censorship comes in or any sort of regulations come in or any sort of, yeah. you know, what you can post. And so are you going like, to build your own like site and stuff then? Like we're um, right now I met with this company called WAP recently okay. and um, they like sell, it's like a online platform. I mean, there's a lot of places there's like school, yeah. you know, you could do Shopify store, you know, basically you just need like a paywall, uh, something that's going to be the yeah. middle person that's going to help to to identify who's a paid member of your newsletter, who's a paid member of yeah. your website or your discord or your telegram or yeah. whatever it is, right? Twitter has their memberships. YouTube has their memberships. Instagram has theirs. This is like a version where you can basically do that for anything and then build different products and services inside of that. Yeah. And also you can give special offers to people who sign up for you. So that's what I've been getting a lot of partnerships with. Do you have any, do you have any merch for like Legion esque merch? I never really sold merch. I, no. like I never I really like, I never really sold much stuff. I never yeah. like did, did much that's of fair. that. Yeah. yeah. I had some, I had some shirts and some tank tops and some <laughs> hoodies when I was like really entrenched, but like, I, I, I was never like the way things are evolving with the creators now. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's a lot of poker creators now that are more all about the views or all about this. They're all about the, trying to get attention, trying to get out there, trying to make a lot of money, trying to get signed by poker sites. So whereas before, I think when I was making a lot of YouTube content, there really wasn't that strat meta. That yeah. wasn't a meta because there weren't companies that were coming in trying to sponsor you. Sure. But now you have World Poker Tour giving out a lot of money to people. You have yeah. Poker Stars, you have GG Poker, ACRs out there. Poker Bros is there, a bunch of training sites, a bunch of new companies are coming into it. Yeah. So I feel like we're about to see a poker boom yeah. like None you, other. You were you were back when the the purists were doing it though. Is what you're saying? You were you you had no. You were just like. The, um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was just having fun. Like I didn't yeah. think of that seriously ever. It just. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was just like, this is like really now. Like people take it real serious and like. I, I, I do know, think you can sense the shift though, where like where people's focus was just when it shifted from like, no, I'm just trying to like, I'm just being me and putting me on the internet and just trying to have fun with people versus like, this is content. I'm like making content. I'm trying to like. And I think a lot of people are starting to get fatigued by like content, you know what I mean? Just like people who are clearly trying to like push something for like, like I'm trying to make content so it's engaging. Cause you can tell the difference when someone's just like having fun, making something they enjoy and putting it out there versus someone who has like a very, like that's like, oh, I'm trying to like jump on this trend or I'm trying to jump on this thing so that I can get a bunch of views so that mm -hmm. I can, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. You can see a lot of people, like most people are followers to begin with. So they see a format that worked and then they go, okay, let me do the same exact thing. Yeah. And right now, like what you said about content fatigue, like I can't take people that t post every day. Yeah. Like no one is that interesting to be posting every day. And <laughs> the meta has now evolved where people think it's optimal to post every single day, talk every fucking day, post a photo, yeah. post this, post that, you know, I don't know, man, it's not, not necessarily for me anymore. Some yeah. people love it. Other people, you know, they love the daily content. They love posting it. People love consuming it. But I think for me, you need to really be diligent of what you're putting in your brain these days. Yeah, and yeah. when you're just consuming this like content, it's nonsense basically by people who like aren't even putting much thought or effort or energy or anything into it. Yeah. Then, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, I go with whatever. I'm not like, I don't stress myself out about it that much anymore, but yeah. you know, you gotta be diligent about <laughs> no, it. No, I mean, I think it's a good, I mean, it's, the thing is like, you can, like I said, there's like a different like attitude to just like, I don't know, like I'm just, I'm making something I like mm -hmm. and there's, <laughs> not to like glorify it too much, but it is kind of like the Steve Jobs approach to like making like the iPhone and like all sorts of things. He was just, he wasn't tunnel visioning, like making money or something. He was just like, I'm trying to try and make something that like I'm passionate about and that I like. And that's why like he went on to like revolutionize like five different industries. He made like Pixar and like all these different things. And I think you can, you can see how much we got like content got overloaded with quantity over quality people are just like just blasting mm -hmm. you know content i think the people who like are more focused on like no, i'm just trying to make something i like and something i believe in and something that uh, you know i enjoy and something i you know that that content i think really rises to the mm -hmm. top at least from what i can tell um, yeah maybe i mean there's just so there's like so many different places that you can be a creator now that you can have a channel on 
I mean, eight or nine different platforms where you could theoretically have a business out of that sure. because it, all you need is a little bit of audience and then you need to find a product to sell. And it's really easy to do that. It's never been ever and never been easier to do that because yeah. a lot of the platforms enable you to do that. Like TikTok shop or like Instagram yeah. shop or YouTube has their store now or any sort of like Shopify store, or any sort of store like that. Never been easier. So I think a lot of people realize how much money people are making. So it makes sense that just like when poker, people can make a lot of money at poker. A lot more people are getting into poker because yeah, yeah. they see oh, there's, there's money to be made. There's yeah. a strategy to be had. So I feel like content now is kind of getting to that point. And, but there is so much opportunity. Like, I mean, yeah. it's pretty crazy how much opportunity it is in yeah. the world of content creation because it's so easy to go viral. It's so easy not to say you can build a channel or build a brand or yeah. build a following for your show, but you know, you can do what you love. Like you said, you can do a show you love. And if you know how to promote it the right way, yeah. it can still get a lot of attention. And then you could turn that into something that you're doing. But if not, you know, you can still do a great side hustle and yeah. or just something for fun or passionate and have a good time with it. And you never know where things are going to go. Like, yeah. you know, you never know. You can do anything, anybody you want to work with, any companies you want to work with these days. Yeah. It's super. Know. Yeah. 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 You're right. Like when I started content, you know, I was dreaming about being a poker stars sponsored pro. I was one of the main guys on poker stars getting supernova elite. And I'm saying, why aren't these guys signing fucking signing joining room one, right? That's my screen name. <laughs> That's why I made my screen name for. I said, well, I'm, I put in my time. I played millions of hands. I proved myself. I'm battling people. You know, it should be my time to shine. Right. And uh, it never really happened. So it was what it was, but <laughs> <laughs> dude i just heard about the glory days of supernova uh -huh. elite man it's that uh, the listen. that as like a, a rake back strat is insane just like hearing about the rake back that was being given out to people and like the dude what a what a time to be playing poker like yeah, it's definitely different man yeah. it's definitely different so like, yeah. yeah i mean now now it's so different right now the like high stakes is live games and like these live streams and yeah. then you know you could go on the underground railroad i call it the mm -hmm. underground poker world which can go deep and wide and go a lot of different directions and a lot of different countries and a lot of different people a lot of different apps a lot of different websites but you kind of have like a few different ecosystems of worlds right now where you have the live cash game world you have the private cash game world you have similar online with regulated sites. And then you have your more non us sites and then you have your underground railroad and some people merge all that together and they play anywhere they want and do anything yeah. they want. And then you have, you know, protection and everything like that. But in my mind, it's really never been easier to find yeah. opportunity. To yeah. Make. I hear you're picking up two card. We were talking about it a bit last night. I love, I love two card PLO. Yeah. yeah I mean, two listen, card PLO. <laughs> listen, buddy. I mean, nobody came up to my game. Like I'm, I'm wait when are, you know, they're not coming. <laughs> Is it dying? Is PLO dying? It's not dying. There's a huge people, bond of people that love PLO, including myself. Yeah. But it's like, there really aren't many people even talking about PLO on the internet. There's like seven people. <laughs> it's sad. I mean, it is what it is. Like, I'm fighting a losing battle. I really was. I mean, I'm trying to get PLO around, but I got to do a lot of work and I got no support. So I've what? I've merged over to the two-card Palm Omaha game. So now I understand how to play both. And now... I think it just it puts you in position to be a more versatile player. And what do you think? What do you think? Why? Why do people not get into PLO as much? Well, there's no like ambassador, really. There's no one that's like putting, you know, it's still Galfond. Yeah, but like he's more a poker ambassador, really. You I know, guess, he, yeah. he's like a P, but like I don't know, he's he the whole heads up. You know, he's my like... he's the, one of the reasons I got into PLO, and he was one of my first coaches. Yeah. So. You know, he was an ambassador for sure, but you need like many, you need like, yeah. think of Hold'em. Hold'em has everybody. Everybody's fucking yeah. playing Hold'em. Everyone's yeah. ambassador for Hold'em. Like yeah, PLO, yeah. you go, even in Vegas, like it's treated with such disrespect here. Yeah. I mean, three games, four games, two places got it. <laughs> disrespect. Every, it's just the PLO's dis. I've been watching, I've been in Vegas now eight years. Potlum in Omaha is so disrespected. By everybody they make a show bro listen they used to make shows <laughs> and they go oh plo doesn't work well like who was on the show like oh yeah like i've never heard of any of those people before right <laughs> like you're setting up for disaster people yeah. set things up for disaster all the but time. like who like i don't even know who you would get to make a plo show be successful though like you would get i mean you'd, you'd have to get like phil you get <laughs> that's the end of the list I don't you know. I don't know, would you play plo stream like a big plo stream if they put it together do you still do you still like play plo much no, like, um, a little bit. I mean, I just like hold them more right now. Yeah. Like the apps, the thing about it these days is there's so many different ways to play poker on your phone. Yeah. With using artificial intelligence and using yeah 
the bots and using different trainers and programs that people organize. Yeah. There is literally nothing like that for PLO. So you mm. could say that's opportunity to yeah. create those tools, which those are kind of things I'm exploring because, yeah. you know, it makes sense to have your own tools. It makes sense to develop your own programs, especially yeah. if you could put those, give those to your students or give yeah. those to your partners or anybody you're working with, or if you yeah. want to maybe want to sell that to your audience, you could potentially do that as well. Or, you know, it's a very versatile thing to be able to develop tools and software. And I feel like poker has a huge opportunity right now with the type of tools that are out there and you have gto wizard ai which yeah. is very intense yeah deep deep <laughs> deep program that can go as deep as you want yeah with the ai and um but there's so much opportunity for thousands of different other programs yeah. and we really don't see much i mean i studied the market and i see you know i see a lot of opportunity out there for a lot of different things yeah i mean i think there's still a lot of room for innovation in the ways that we study poker even in hold'em, you know, I think a lot of, I think, and I hope, hopefully, I think we're going to see a lot of it, but how do you think, what do you, what do you think could be that innovation? Um, I think we see a lot of tools that help gain precision, but not a lot of tools that help you, um, really retain that information and interpret the information well mm -hmm. for you. So like one of my, you know, one of the things that I would like to see is something that like, allows you to simplify uh, on mass strategies, mm -hmm. a way that I could roll out a heuristic that I have in my mind, roll it out over a large sum of flops, and then see the net cost of that heuristic over like the game tree as a whole. Mm -hmm. And see, and then say like, okay, does that, is that an acceptable loss for, for the, the playability that this heuristic gives me? Is that an acceptable loss or does it need some tweaking? And then do I, do I, can I tweak that heuristic a little and then make it just as easily to execute, but the net loss of it be much less. And I think there's a lot of people doing that kind of work, um, manually, but I think with things like GTO wizard AI and, you know, these tools that allow to like do mass solves and solves very quickly, we can, um, that's a, I think tools that, uh, start moving away from the idea of precision and closer to the idea of like playability of strategies mm -hmm. is where I think there's a lot of room for innovation in, in poker tools. Yeah, I could definitely, I could see what you're saying, right? Yeah. Like something that helps you to put into a visualizing visualization or some sort of data way. Cause like GTO wizard has basically, you know, come up with, and to me, right. New ways yeah. to take data, take ideas and yeah. put it into this color coded you know, different tabs, different strategies. So I think having something like that. Well, like you know, it's a new, it's a, you could think of it as a new way to view like an aggregate report. Like you could look right, at right. an aggregate report over every flop and say, okay, or let's say a turn. Let's say I simplify every turn to like betting every hand that picks up equity as a bluff. Mm -hmm. And let's just say this is, this is, this is a way a lot of human players might play a turn where it's like, okay, I'm just going to bet every hand that picks up equity as a bluff. And then I'm going to have X value threshold. And that's my strat. How much bluffing am I missing? If that was the only way that I bluffed, and on what spots am I missing a lot of bluffing? Mm -hmm. And then you could like you could just roll that over an aggregate report or a subset of like 195 flops, for example, or all and of it them. It might just be better just to have that strategy in mind and not worry about it. Like sometimes you're gonna lose yeah. a little bit, but it is what it is. It'd be really cool to see how much are you losing, right? Right. I mean, actually, yeah. that's a good point because basically, like a position that I always think about is just the concept of when you're check due in a three bet pot. Yeah. It's always betting third. Sure. And only betting third. So you check or bet a third. And then you're saying as the th pre prop as the caller? pre prop caller. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, which is like a common thing, right? Because most people right there are not going to be check raising enough. So right yeah. away, there's probably going to be overfolding. So you're kind of printing on that third. And then if they do check call, you know, most and this this could work against you know this is more like a big exploit thing you can use where you're just printing against weaker yeah. players, but better players are kind of countering that. So I could yeah. see if a program was able to you know, show you that data, which I mean, I, it, it feels like there might be something that this is, this, I mean, this is really like a, like a display problem. Like this data is accessible quite mm -hmm. easily. I think even right now, but it's just like building the interface to see it, I mm -hmm. think. And I, well, I think GTO wizard is uniquely positioned to be able to show this data with GTO wizard AI, because we have the ability to calculate uh, a lot very quickly. So yeah. like you yeah. can, yeah, so you can, you can run an I, you can get aggregate report data. Okay. Basically. Yeah. So it seems like with the wizard, you can essentially build out your own kind of unique strategies yeah. and you can know how to basically like, let's say, for example, make it easy. You always bet a hundred percent of the time and that's just your strategy. Yeah. But now you can before, like if you bet a hundred percent of the time, you just end up in all these bunch of crazy spots that 
you know, you would study it and it would say, well, that's not a play. So you can't yeah. really see the suggestions for later on. Yeah. Whereas now you can, you can edit the inputs and you can edit the ranges and you can edit. Yeah. What well, my, I mean, so yeah, my dream is, is a study tool where you have, where you, you have a, a completely personalized solution where like you sort of put in, these are my heuristics, these are my spots. So any spot where I go to like review a hand, say, I can get critiqued against the strategy I'm playing that I've planned to play. Not like necessarily, you can see the GTO one, but it's a better thing for me to know is like, oh, have I deviated from my own strategy? How do I have a strategy for this spot? And for some reason I keep deviating in these spots where like, I, I believe this is my strat, um, but I'm not playing it for some reason. And maybe I have some intuition in game that's really useful. That's like caused me to deviate. So I should consider my heuristic that's maybe worse. Or maybe I just like keep crumbling in a moment of pressure where like I need to be playing in a certain way and I'm just not doing it or I'm autopiloting or, you know, whatever, 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 mm -hmm. whatever. So like, I think that's, I think that's where poker uh, study tools hopefully will be headed mm -hmm. is less comparison against like a GTO strat and more you being able to take calculated losses from GTO knowing in, with an increase in playability. And then I think what we're already really seeing is what you see is a competition of simplification. Like all the players are trying to simplify strats and to be really, yeah, again, I think there's a lot of growth to be done in, in actually making that usable. Because right now you can like node lock, right? Like I can node lock on GTO Wizard and I can like do that. But it'd be really great to be able to take like, you know, instead of node locking by category in one spot, roll it out over 300 turns mm -hmm. or, three, you know, 3,000 turns or something and just see like if I just stick to this kind of, you know, categorical simplification. And then just saving that and being like, okay, cool. Now every time I get hands analyzed, it can be analyzed against this. And I can, I can, I can see where I'm making mistakes according to my strategy, you know? So would you say you like more of the process of becoming as good as you can at poker, or you want to do this because you want to be gambling with it, or you want to be making money off of all this knowledge or this information that you're gaining by oh, dedicating I'm... yourself deeper down this rabbit hole of, of the poker theory game? Yeah. I mean, you're interviewing me now, but I, I I'm a fan of, uh, I'm a fan of definitely I think about this question yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm like going deep down the rabbit hole again. Yeah. I, but I, I personally one. enjoyed the strategy far more than I enjoyed the money part of poker. Um, I, it's, it's part of what I think also made me a decent player is I was also less worried about the losses of money in poker, but, mm -hmm. but I enjoy the strategy. I enjoy, like I, I could talk tools and strategies and ways and like meta game and like ways to improve studying and get better and like ways to think better about the game all day. I would love that. You know what I mean? I mean, that's why like I do more coaching these days than, than anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the actual like prospect of winning a ton while playing, it, it sounds way more interesting to me personally, like gaining the respect of uh, other players. So, mm -hmm. and sometimes that comes along with winning, but the, the money itself is like less interesting to me. Yeah. You know, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, to me, like the strategy is really interesting now Yeah, where I'm not even, cause like gambling comes with, you know, when you go play, it's not like, this isn't poker. You're playing on some of these sites, like you're playing whatever the software decided to make the software and then whatever the game is. So it's like, Mm. To me, that isn't interesting anymore. I used to enjoy kind of like going through those environments and figuring out how to like navigate and beat the bots and like, you know, beat people that are trying to beat you, right? Like any, any, anything's goes yeah. in these online poker games, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I always was ready to battle with that. I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, but then I figured out how deep this stuff goes. And I said, like, do I really want to be dedicated my time to be spending my time in these environments? So for me, I would love to be able to compete against real players who I knew were real and they were trying like i used yeah. to i love fucking battling against great players that's why yeah. i love playing the bots and ai because at least i know that they're cheating they already have they already know what to do right like yeah, yeah. I, at least i already know that yeah they've got the fucking answers to the question here and they're not going to pull it out of their head so to me i'm like at least i know i'm going to fair chance when you're playing on, on some of these sites you don't not to say that you can't find bad players not yeah. to say you can't yeah you know there's so much action out there and once you know how to game select once you know how to seat select and site select you yeah. know you're living a good life in yeah, poker, yeah, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I think I still view it as like, um, I don't know, when I was playing, you know, on Iggy, there was almost certainly bots on Iggy, but it's but it's still a game of how do you how do you not let that break your confidence mm -hmm. as much as it's going to break other people's confidence 
how Definitely. do you, right? Like, how do you it's a mental game? How do you believe in yourself to even, 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 you know, even to recognize that like, oh, this play is a bot. So like, can I adjust my straight play strategically mm -hmm. against that? Or can I, you know, so it's still, you're still, in my opinion, you're still competing against the other people. You to, yeah. to, 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 you know, I used to like, love that. I used to love yeah. competing against the bot. I didn't like, I didn't care <laughs> about right on the bot. I'm like, I'm going to outplay the bot. I don't know. Like, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thought, I'm beating these bots. I didn't like, I, it well, if never, it's a true bot, most you know? bots, my understanding <laughs> of most bots online, they're not that good. If it's a if it's a person using RTA, um, they're better, but they're still they're still it's still a human looking at strategy trying to implement that strategy. So you can mm -hmm. still make some assumptions on on errors that will be made. So for example, if you get to a spot where there's a lot of mixing with a lot of bluffs, uh, most like RTA users will probably bluff a lot more than they should. Mm -hmm. So you can so there's still ways to sort of exploit that because if mm -hmm. it's just like if you just see a lot of mixing but they're going to roll them all to 100 because like, most people aren't like truly even RTA users aren't like randomizing every decision and like being super precise with the way that they're doing RTA if that's a thing people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, how big a concern I mean, I hear I, I, I felt like the more I've studied poker, the, like the less concerned I am with RTA because to me, RTA is a data point that is a suggestion that let you know what to do. And it's kind of like having a HUD where you have VPIP, you have preflop raise, you have three bet, and then you have a bunch of other very valuable statistics that yeah. you, we always used to use these stats all the time. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. what's his uh, one money at showdown? Oh, okay, it's this, all right, do this play. Like there's very easy adjustments that you can identify in people's statistical patterns. And then once you yeah. know that about these people, you can always take a strategy that usually is, it's, it's like, you're printing with these strategies. Yeah, I definitely do think that the main concern of RTA um, is is more of an emotional one for people, mm -hmm. you know, because it's more of one of a, a feeling like this game isn't as fair as they want it to be. It's not really what they're signing up for. It's a feeling of misalignment between operators and them. You know, it's 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 these kinds of things that really concern people because you. Yeah, I mean, there are strategic. I mean, I mean, people have done a lot of research though and shown the money bots are taking out of some of these player pools, and it's apparently an awful lot. So I guess that's a obviously a big concern too. But definitely, right? I do I think mean, yeah. I do think to just boil this down to a simple like issue of like strategy. I think most people are just like it's also it's difficult like to play in a pool where you know there are bots. It's difficult to play in that pool and just feel as comfortable, as confident, as mm -hmm. good. And, and yeah, I think people just have, that's like the biggest problem. It's like, I just want to be able to show up and play and like, and not get in a weird spot and have to like uh, wonder to myself, like, is this guy a bot and like finding some crazy bluff that no human would ever play, you know, or like an RTA user that like they would never play. Or is this, or is this, um, just me playing against another human. Cause I do think for most people, a loss against one feels totally different, you know, than a loss against the other, like being outplayed, it sucks, but like, that's almost inspiring. Like, okay. I can, I can learn, I can grow, I can get better. But mm -hmm. like uh, someone doing RTA, it's like, okay, well, I, I, I don't really, Can't do anything about yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know what like, to do here. Problem, yeah. Some spots are just really solved. So when yeah. you end up in spots, like, you know, they really know what to do, right? They're not yeah. really making a big mistake. So yeah, I mean, especially if they're going like flop to river, right? right people are exactly. people, people are using RTA on river spots. Again, this is you can think strategically about people using RTA because most people using RTA, you probably have a very small percentage of people using RTA in all spots at all situations. That that it's very time consuming. It's yeah. probably not very super likely, but you can make strategic assumptions. So it's like if people are just looking at river spots, for example, you can still then start thinking about like, okay, well, combinatorically, how are they going to get to this river spot in an uneven, unevenly distributed way where now if they looked at a solution, where would that lean their bluffing? Like mm -hmm. you can kind of be sophisticated in the way that you, you think about these spots. But again, I, I just don't think strategic concerns are like, are, are people's real concerns. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's the feeling of, of safety and security in the games that they care about. Yeah, especially if you're playing without, with your mind and you're not playing with it, you know, yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't, that's kind of what I decided a few years back when I was like, do I really want to keep playing online poker? And I just decided not really because I didn't see another way. You either have to be do uh, competing with them using RTA or not playing because yeah. how can you know that like if everyone else is going to, it's like a HUD. If everyone else is using a HUD and you're not using a HUD, you're at a pretty big disadvantage. Doesn't mean you, you can't. I've never win. used a HUD. Never used a HUD. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not a HUD guy. Oh man, I mean, with the HUD, I, you know, there's like I said, there's outliers, right? There's definitely people, yeah. and I've used HUD not plenty. Well, but, too, the, but the thing is, I think you have the HUD is a huge advantage. But you have different generation of poker players. This is an interesting discussion because a HUD, in my experience working with people too, I've talked tons of students who I've worked with who I've told them stop using HUD and they get better mm -hmm. because the they they collapse around the data. They, they they rely on the data too much, and so like they they don't know how to like 
think strategically and then let that data inform our strategic thought. Right. We're, but right. like people who came from different, like a different generation, we're, we're using the HUDs differently. Now people are using HUDs like, almost like it's RTA. Like it's like, okay, if I just see he, I just want an answer. If I just see he goes to showdown too much, I can just make a, I can just make a blatant right. assumption. And, but you have to like, you have to, you know, you have to use HUD data intelligently. This is why a HUD yeah. is RTA. This is yeah. my, this is like <laughs> yeah, my yeah, yeah. main point. <laughs> RTA has been around for as long as people made the first HUD. Yeah. Because how are these, all these stats? I used to have 24 games up and I had stats on every player in the game. So well, I, yeah, I mean, upping, I don't upping, even pay attention to anything. I just go to a river. Oh, I see his, I see his stats. I see his pre-flop. Okay. The cutoff open, the guy is opening up 50% of hands. Like, my button is sitting easy. The guy opens up eight percent of hands. My button, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. I mean, where, I think, I think, I think. How is that not RTA then? Yeah, I mean, I th I do think HUDs are uh, slightly different because, like I said, I think you can. I don't know. I think it still takes like intelligent reading into the situation to use a HUD well. Like you have to understand the nuances yeah, of poker play. That. There used to be this best best content creator who'd break down the data and the HUDs, and this yeah. guy was a damn wizard with that. And I'm like, man, this guy. He uses it way more than me. He's yeah. like, oh, because of that, 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 we're gonna. I'm like, damn, these people are. Yeah. This is what I'm playing against. Like, oh, let's go. But know? that's why. That's why I think some people see that and they try to just like. Yeah, I think I think there is like an over reliance. There's a certain player type with like an over reliance on HUDs, mm -hmm. and they're they're using the HUD. They're going from the HUD to the decision. They're not going like from the situation, and then adding in the HUD data. I mean, like, how does this HUD data change the situation? And um, I could, yeah, from a mental game perspective, this is, it's just like a a lack of an uncomfortability with uncertainty but like it very few people are uh, not very few people but there's a certain type player type who like will just go they'll see the hud data and then everything about the hand will get filtered through this hud stat and in in, in, yeah. in in a bad way like it's just like this is you're now making bad decisions because you think this hud stat tells you something like i don't care what this guy's pre-flop vpip is he's 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 check raised you and then barreled off in a three bat pot and he's a fish He's not bluffing you, right? I don't. I don't care what his like whatever percentage is, or right. like you know, like yeah, three percent pre. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Gonna be taking the. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but but there are people who kind of act that way. They're just like, oh, I can't fold against this guy because, you know, I I see this stat, and and so that's why, like for for me personally, I found my the, the HUD stats were actually too tempting to like they would they would pull me away from thinking well. I so definitely, I, I definitely understand that. Yeah, yeah. So I just ditched it. I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I, I in my experience, it helped me play better. But yeah, I used to do things where like sometimes I'd play with it. Like I have all sorts of of counterintuitive grind strategies just yeah. to kind of shake up my mind a little bit test myself in different ways and that's yeah. why i love the programs like i i can't believe that you guys these days get to have the programs that people new players get to learn this way i you got to learn before from reading the book and yeah. watching a video and you know now it's like you have a tool that simulates the preflop situations for you so you can train a thousand different preflop spots so like at no and hold them like heads up i can pretty much you know, at a certain stack, be accurate almost every single time now. Yeah, and yeah. After you know, but I saw that. I mean, I did train a lot, a lot, a lot of hands. But but, that, but but I think I think though the, the, they're with this, just like with a HUD, like with all the advent of all this knowledge and stuff, like you do you do lose a lot. Like 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 people, what it took to figure out things to like study and like do the work and things like that. That 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 builds a certain kind of like problem solving and analytical thinking and like in in a, in a and a completeness of your understanding of your strategy and the way you view the game that can kind of get lost when you just get given answers. Like when you just get given answers about things, I mean, you see it all the time. People just struggle to, there's so, there's, there's too much information these days. So, so much, yeah. there's, there's, there's so much less information as that's hard won. And so because of that, I think a lot of people struggle to like still think strategically. Like that's why in my opinion, like the strongest players today are the people who are like pre-solver era. Mm-hmm who are still playing with all the technology. Like you see a lot of, I mean, obviously there's outliers, but the, the people who knew how to problem solve and think and strategize before they had access to all of this. And then they just like use the information to layer on to their already really strong strategic thinking made really great players. But, and, but in today's day and age for every phenomenal player you get, I feel like you get like 10,000 people who are just lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? <laughs> who are just like, oh bro, it's crazy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think it's like, I think poker is really starting to have this renaissance because in, in America specifically, you have so many more. Remember for a while, there was no young people under 25 playing the main event. And now yeah. you have all of these very well-known, influential 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 22-year-old poker players on social media. You have all the content creators coming in. 
um, working with this event, the Celebrity Poker Invitational, which is all like NFL players, content creators, influencers, and yeah, I'm consulting with them to help them. I'm looking for companies to invest in right now, events to invest in, podcasts, yeah. media companies, like anything that I think is great. Events in Vegas, I'm looking at all, I'm like casinos, I'm open to anything right now. Yeah, so yeah. I met this series, I met the founder, uh, one of the one of the co-founders, Sky Hayes, who he works with, uh, he used to be an NFL player for San Diego Chargers. <laughs> And uh, he uh, now he's a president of talent working with all these athletes and brought in a bunch of N his NFL friends to help him get brand deals and brought in a bunch of content creators who do all sorts of different things in social media, whether they're cooking or whether they're Olympians or whether some UFC people are going to be there. So I met these guys and uh, I met Hayes and I was like, this guy's the man. I don't meet. I've never met a guy like this in poker before. who's <laughs> like, yeah, let's like work together, do some cool stuff. I'm like, great. This is easy. <laughs> He's like, yeah. And then I got to know him and um, brought him to some stuff. And, you know, I kind of saw the way he worked and moved. He introduced me to his other co-founder, this guy, Blake Wynn, who's, uh, you know, local kid. And Related to Steve Wynn? He has Uncle Steve's Wynn. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's what he said. He says, uncle, you know, his family's in the resort business and yeah. he... Uh, it's Uncle Steve. I'd say. <laughs> and, but he said he's getting into poker. And I was said, well, you know, listen, if you want to get into poker, and this guy used to be a successful YouTuber when he was 13 years old or yeah. 14 years old, like his content's up there. I'm like, damn, this kid's crazy. This kid got a crazy story. Yeah. So now he wants to get into poker. I said, how can I help? How can we work together? You yeah. know, how can I help, you know, make this as big as it can be? Because I know that these moments are so powerful for helping to spread poker outside yeah. of our bubble. Yeah. And I think right now, like you said, we got enough we got enough of a lot of things, but we don't really have that outside the normal poker, the more fun player, I would call fun player poker. Sure. Where people are having a good time. It's personalities. It's people that when you never see a poker table, but now you get to show them through content and be able to put one event on and potentially get a hundred. These, said, these guys said last time they got 150 million views from one event with all the clips and all the live streams yeah. and everyone that was. So to me, like I find that stuff for me, like I've been kind of applying my, poker, you know, learning poker, I've kind of been dedicated on this topic for the mm -hmm. past 10 years. And now I'm bringing poker study back into it. I'm bringing yeah. this perspective back into it with making content and working with all these companies I've been working with and just learning so much over how the poker industry works that now I'm trying to go to new companies and I'm saying, you know, I'm your bridge to anything you need in the poker world, whether it's information, whether it's resources, whether it's my channels, whether it's people I know who are looking for opportunity. Yeah. So I'm kind of like building this new position that you know, there really is no blueprint I look at ahead of me. Yeah. So like you have playing, but also you have content. Also you have, you can start your own tools or you can invest tools or you yeah. can help build companies and elevate them. So it's like pretty interesting now to get to this position when I used to be such a hardcore player or I was like, a, yeah. you know, a trolling, making podcasts, trolling. Or like trolling on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> that's what Twitter is. You shit, you're fucking trolling the entire, I, I was such a troll about a lot of things. Yeah. And you know, some things, then shit got serious about a lot of things, right? Like <laughs> then topics, people got serious and the conversation got serious. All of a sudden it's cheating scandals. It's sexual harassment cases. Yeah. It's fucking, and before you know it, I'm like, damn, I'm in the center of this and, and I'm covering these events. And I was like, like I was is, just a troll. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I was just having fun. Yeah, like, yeah. About some things, but it's like, I'm like, this isn't really what I expected this to get to. But yeah. now that it's here, you know, I'm going to take on that. I'm going to take on that responsibility and try to speak up for poker community. So yeah. Do you, do you enjoy like getting into the mix on the drama and stuff? I used to, I used to like, um, I used to like figuring out what the fuck was going on with these sure. people because, and you know, I don't know, man. Like if I, when I was coming up in poker world, I love to look up to the guys who were successful, who were had played the high stakes. And then they help to like keep in control these psychopathic people that are in the poker world. Sure. And I was like, okay, like that guy at least speaks for me. You know, he's like, like yeah. I used to think Dan Negreanu was that guy. I was like, this guy's, you know, he's the fucking man. He's yeah. speaking up for the players. He cares about me yeah. as a professional. He cares about my best interest at heart. Yeah. Like this guy's the fucking man. I know if I got a problem, I can go to that guy and yeah. that guy is going to fix my problem. And then, you know, we had some incidents happen where that didn't happen. And then I said for myself, like, well, I got it. Maybe I can be that guy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I can at least be that guy for people I know and I can take yeah. in that responsibility. So I help mediate a lot of issues, arbitrate issues, investigate scandals. People message me all the time. Help me on with this. Help me on with that. I'm like, damn, I'm, I can't do this. I'm getting like, <laughs> this is wait, this is crazy. I never even knew, you know, I go from talking with seven people from all of a sudden, I've got thousands of people in my messages. Yeah. Everybody wants something. Everybody, mm. everybody wants something. Everybody wants, especially living in Vegas, eight years. Everybody want to do something. It is what it is. And, you know, eventually I'm just like, man, I can't. This isn't like, 
I'm not, I'm not making enough money to do this really. Like this is not, <laughs> this is not worth it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's a lot of stress and it's so a lot of pressure stress. to take from people when like everybody's like looking to you. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to like, it's tough. It's like the double edged sword of like wanting, wanting to help though. Like you, you get out there, you want to help people. And then suddenly I was like, Oh, well this guy's going to help. And so that the, the everyone, everyone just goes to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, there, and then nobody else really like stepped. I, I never really saw anybody else like step up where, you know, you had some people that like Doug who said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to back up some of these things. Right. And unless it's me on an Island, just fucking yelling, looking like a psychopath about some of these issues, then people are like, why does this guy care? So, you know, and I, I used to get that a lot. Like, why does this guy care about this? Why does he care about that? I was like, yeah, it's a good point. Like, why do I care? So why do I, why, what's my problem? Criticism why, accepted. <laughs> why am I so interested in this stuff? Yeah. Like good point. So yeah. now I'm thinking about ways to help people where I can sort of build out my organization, build the companies I work with, be able to give people opportunities inside of those organizations, companies I invest in, they need to hire people, they need content creators, they need people that are gonna help to promote whatever it is. So I'm kind of trying to build out a system where I can handle anybody coming to me to say, I need this, or I would like to do this. Yeah. I can sort of have a process set up with a concierge service where someone can handle yeah. that for me. Cause before I couldn't, you know, that's like breaks you down mentally. You yeah. get thousand, you get hundreds of people talking to you. Like nobody teaches you how to do any of this stuff. Yeah, yeah like content creator world, your life changes if you yeah. really succeed at it. You're a good person for the moderation, man, though. I think I can tell, like, I think one of the reasons people go to you is like, you, you seem to like, I don't know, like you give people the benefit of the doubt a lot, which I think is a rare trait in situations. I think, I think we, we need more of that in, in poker situations, but like not unfairly though, too. Like, I, I think you, I think you thread the the needle fairly well of like, that make people, a lot of people mad, bro. Yeah. Just yeah make yeah. a lot of people upset. Well, I mean, that's because everyone wants someone to take a side, right? Like have, everyone. Want, should, they, yeah. I get so much. Oh my God. Take a side, take a side, take yeah. a, about all these things. Even Doug, Doug Polk used to always say, you know, Pop, you send the fence to some of these things. I'm like, listen, buddy, when I ain't really give a fuck about something, you're going to see yeah, me take yeah, a yeah. side, right? Like, I don't care about most. I don't really, well, like, I've seen, I've seen you take I don't know enough to care about some things, but some things I did take a side yeah, on. I, that, I thought it was sides. kind of unfair criticism a lot of ways yeah, because yeah. there's plenty of times I took a stance on an idea, but some things that are more explosive that I don't really know about, I don't have a side to take because I, I can't know that information that yeah. is going to allow me, whereas you're saying, this is this, like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't agree. Like everyone's yeah. got their different opinion. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, especially cause you have like, you, you're in a position where you have a big following. I think it's, um, like I've been in situations, right. Where like somebody has hurt me deeply and then I try to tell somebody else about it and they're honestly being mature about it. They're being like, okay, well I don't know. Cause I wasn't in the situation. And I just like, I'm like, I just want you to take my side, like be on my team. You know what I mean? And like, so I think it's natural, but I, I don't know. I've seen you, I've seen you handle situations. I've seen you take sides on things and like be like, nah, I don't know. That doesn't sound quite right. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, 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 I think you thread the. I think I personally, I think you thread the needle well. But I mean, I've been still doing it for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So long. I look around. I'm like, man, 2024. This is crazy, Jared. We're here, <laughs> 2024. Like I started this game 21 years old, making blog posts, playing 10 cent, 25 cent, and 38 year, 38 years old now, man. Yeah. Still, still like, and really like, I feel like I'm in a such a such a good position where. This is what I used to dream about in some ways. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty crazy to really see that that come true in some ways. Yeah. Not not always, right? I, I guess in retrospect, I would have done things differently, but sure. Pretty wild is to see where where poker world can take you. I mean, yeah. What's like the what's is there like a one particular next big thing you're working on or like I mean you've mentioned I, you always right seem now to have a I'm lot doing going Project on. Kamikaze. I'm calling it where Project Kamikaze. I'm doing Project Kamikaze <laughs> where I'm just like you know what I'm taking every meeting I'm taking every call I'm trying to talk to as many people about what they're doing as I possibly can I'm getting clear on my vision you know how mindset works it's clear yeah. you on your vision the clearer you are on what exactly you want to be spending your time on what do you want to be doing yeah so for me i think my main focuses right now are i want to be working on the biggest content that's going to be out there in the world mm. and that's content you know poker makes natural sense yeah you know to do biggest poker matches i used to do some of the biggest poker shows in terms of my podcast in terms of the content i would create so i'm trying to take myself out of the digital world into the physical world and you know, my perfect scenario is I'm owning Las Vegas casinos. I'm investing in the casinos out mm -hmm. here. I'm helping to put on the biggest poker matches in the entire world that are going on. I'm working with the big companies, um, being a part of that conversation, uh, might be investing in those and kind of build my investment infrastructure around that with some of the other tools and companies that I'm with. So right now it's more of, you know, I'm trying to gather really high quality partnerships with really yeah. people I really believe in. And people, I think that have a vision that I share and that we align with each other. And, 
you know, I've worked with a lot of people over the years. I've worked with almost every company in poker. I've gotten to know a lot of people and I've seen the people that are still here yeah. 10 years later, grinding their fucking heart out, trying to make poker a living for themselves, yeah. trying to make the industry a living for themselves. And you know what? All those people are now running the companies. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those people I've been working with for a long time. So for me, it's like, I look around and you know, Doug's doing the lodge and like that. I don't know what y'all know. I don't think people are really paying attention to the lodge. Like that is getting massive. Yeah, it's blown up. Yeah. Like, and if those guys can stay in business, then they got a real special thing. And that guy is an animal and he's got the right setup around him to really fucking dominate. Dude, I saw so their, I saw, I saw their like exciting to see things like that. They're crazy. Their crazy tournament schedule or whatever. If they're like wild, uh, wacky things. Thing. Yeah. That's they're the, wack. They're like, that's what that's I like. About with, yeah. They're like taking, they're like taking, taking risks. Random chances, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, and that's what I like so, about that's what we need. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm down for any way that's going to bring some new ideas to the table and they're just getting started. They started this new stream one year ago. I went down there for that. Yeah. I've seen this evolution one year. Yeah. I was going through it cause I'm working on a video about it that I might put out. I might not put out, but, um, I make a lot of content and then I don't always put it out, but I'm basically just saying like, what's happened with the lodge this past year and yeah. I'm going through their content and I'm like, damn, this is like Doug took on these matches. He play heads up against people. Yeah. Like, that's the guy you want to be studying. You know, when you're looking around and you're looking for the best players, Phil Galfond, yeah, Doug Polk, you know what I mean? These guys stand out. Above, Dude, I just want to get, I, I just want to bring heads up back again. You know what I mean? I just want Me big too. heads up back. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You got, you got the vision. You got to make it happen. Cause I, bro, I love heads up. Heads up is so much fun. Cause it's, even though it's, solved right like it really isn't because what if i just start what if i just well, so see betting like, yeah that's what i'm saying it's, a, it's so fragile you well not even that you can just change a little bit and then like the yeah. game tree down the tree changes a lot exactly, like you right? know like if i'm not three betting all of this range or whatever yeah. that's if I'm, I'm three betting 100 percent of five six offsuit and yeah five six suited and six seven offsuit and six seven suited all the time yeah that changes everything yeah. so if you don't adjust for that which you know how can you adjust for that then that's, this is the fun. And this is why I'm really passionate about learning Hold'em right now, because I want to get to a point with commentary where like, I'm as good at, as I am at Hold'em as I'm at PLO. Mm. And I feel like whenever I do Hold'em commentary, I just, <laughs> fuck it. I'm not. Your gonna, eyes glaze over. You're just. Oh, like, I'm like, what am I reading right now? <laughs> <laughs> What's been your biggest surprise switching to Hold'em from PLO? Like, have there been like things that really shock you about like strategic insights or differences that seem massive? It's just or? like how the concept of why you bet small. Yeah, 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 because you're basically like 20%. I'm like, why the fuck would I ever bet 20%? Like PLO, maybe it's more of a meta now with some people in some spots, but yeah. PLO was 50 to seven, 50 to hundred and 75 bigger off very often. I feel like you do 33. For, I have studied very little PLO, but my understanding on like, is like super connected spots. So like, like three, three card straights mm -hmm. or like, or yeah, paired boards. Now it's more of a strategy before yeah. I would say there was a few people that were kind of doing that in certain situations. And those guys, I fucking hated playing against. <laughs> they'd bet like 20%. I'm like, Oh my God. Cause I didn't really like get the grasp of you have to defend this much more. Yeah, 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 I have yeah, to yeah. defend much more. Yeah. And now once you start to like really grasp that concept yeah. of, okay, like why is 20% so effective and what exactly does that set you up for in the future yeah, yeah, yeah. with that 20%? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're breaking people's strategies down pretty hard with that concept. So Man. for me, that's been one of the hardest things, just understanding why you can bet so small all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, it's like all the time, bet small. And then randomly it's like, 400% is good here. And you're like, damn, this is like, what's well, going on? Well, in, it, you know, the, the way I would express it too, is just like earlier streets spots, you get smaller betting because there's, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too mathematical on people, but there's, 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 I'll just say there's more incentive for your weaker hands to be value betting and pushing out hands that hold equity against you too. And so like if my, my weakest hand, if I'm trying to bet it for value, and then I just need to go really small to keep their range appropriately wide. But I still want the bottom of the range, which might have equity against some of my weakest hands. Um, if, you know, take a board like, you know, Jack 3-2. I might be wanting to bet my 3x because there's all of these overcards between the 3 and the Jack mm -hmm. that a lot, some of them have to fold. You know, so it, but later streets you get bigger because it's like, okay, well, that incentive gets lost. Not as many hands hold as much equity. So, like, as, as there's fewer streets to come, there's like polar strategies become mm. much more of a thing but this is why i love learning i've been working with yeah. my coaches and they're telling me like shout out to tombo shout out to yeah. shout out to alvin teaches poker i mean these guys have been helping me out use the wizard use yeah. uh, shout cg we did a session before and man oh my god i'm so impressed <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, because I don't really actually like when you just like I don't have a conversation like this with anybody about hold'em strategy ever. Mm. And I don't like talk. People think like I got a lot of poker friends or something. Like I know everybody, but not many people play poker like that anymore. Yeah. Where yeah. they're like really taking this seriously like that. And they the ones that do play tournaments. Yeah. Know, my PLO friends are like Doctor GTO. You know, Doc. he's like in the PLO. He's one with the PLO sim, right? <laughs> he's like, holy shit. He's the man. He's the man. But, you know, these these Hold'em guys I've been working with, so impressed. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Hold'em is a different world, bro. It's crazy. These guys Hold'em. with the data, different world. And the way they know how to correlate the data that's shown on the screen into why they're doing and what they're yeah. doing and their understanding of, of how deep that goes to me yeah. is so impressive. Yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta solve for why, as they say. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, yeah. I love. I talk poker. I could talk poker strategy for, for days. I, I love it. I loved. I loved learning it. I loved. I mean, I loved the breakthrough moments. I didn't ever had like coaches or anything. Oh, I had. I've had a couple coaches, but like when I was real, when I was like you know grinding and stuff like that. Like most of my beginning, I was just like fucking running pio sims forever and just like staring at it. And I would love the breakthrough moments where like your brain connects all the dots and you're just mm-hmm. like this is why I'm betting small in these spots. And mm-hmm. it just like clicks. Oh, uh, that, that was, that was the addictive part for me about playing. It's like when, when you, yeah. you love those like light, bulb oh, those thing-ing. light bulb, those light bulb, like uh, psychologists call them insight moments. But like, yeah, when you have like a moment of like insight where your brain just like suddenly connects threads and it's just like, right. I, I get it. Like I get it. Like right now I get it. I used to, I used to take that approach where that's why I like work by myself so much. Yeah. And I, I used to love, you know, let me, cause like with these programs, it, tracks your scores so like i'm yeah. crushing a lot of my bots i'm like man yeah. I'm, I'm actually pretty like i think i'm a lot better than i even realize yeah, certain, yeah, yeah certain you know parts of playing the game against like bad players yeah like i don't think these guys can really beat you and unless they get really lucky and you're playing deep stack hold them cash like heads up or shorthanded like yeah. there's just no way that these guys can even handle an aggressive strategy they're sure. just you know i mean <laughs> come on but i mean what is what it is but um I don't know. I'm obsessed. But like you said, right, you're yeah. you're into the game. Like that's why I used to be. That's why I did content for so long. Yeah. I used to love talking with successful, unsuccessful, the best, the craziest poker players. Like I used to be so addicted to this of like Dude. talking, seeing what people are up to and like getting the fans excited for the content. Like, oh, who is this fucking guy? Right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Who is Kuma Khan? Like, who were these people? <laughs> Think about it. There's no record of who these people were. Outside of like a maybe a three hour interview with them on my channel. And that was the thing to me that I used to always mm. love was like, who are all these people that are dedicating their lives to poker right to now? Like, to like cards, to cards. Yeah, like yeah. what the fuck is these guys' problem, Dude, man? It's that's, amazing. Yeah. Poker's a be- it's just such a weird, like, I don't know. It's an amazing thing to have fallen into. Like, I feel so fortunate because it is crazy and wacky, but like, like it, but it's also like nothing else. Like, it's like, I feel like it's like no other community. Like, it's just so. It's bizarre, man. Like you a lot have of different backgrounds. Like you're from the military. I was in the military. I was in the Navy. Right? Yeah. You know, like you're yeah. in the military, and you're kind of taking that career path, and then you end up as yeah. a poker player playing yeah. online poker. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. My friends who I remember being in the Navy, being like, "What the heck, Jared's like, I'm like on deployment. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go grind. I gotta go play hands. I gotta go get hands in. I can't go fight. I gotta go get my <laughs> Just, session. And I'm, I'm, yeah, we're I'm training. Uh, no, I'm training. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about that last night. We had we had dinner at a yeah. great place here, Herbs and Rye. Shout out to Herbs and Rye. Yeah, it was nice, amazing. Nice steak, nice meal, some some glass of wine. You didn't have any wine, but yeah. I was drinking yeah. a glass of wine. Made a friend. We did make a friend. Mrs. Bond. Mrs. Bond. <laughs> Mrs. Bond. She's showing us, Bond. Sh- showing us dance moves. <laughs> she's the, she's cool. She's, she's, she said she worked with Cloak Lee during she, she could. What was she talking about? Crip walk? She was talking about crip walk. And yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, was trying, I was trying to crip walk. So if you guys... Yeah, you can imagine how that went. It didn't go well. Yeah, I mean, you had some, you had some talent for sure. Right? <laughs> I, some, I appreciate it. It's nice of you. You had some talent, man. Yeah. yeah She's the one who recommended me the uh, the burger place I went to today. It was very good. Yeah. But yeah, what, what were we talking about? You said oh, we were we were at dinner. Oh, talking about Navy stuff. Being it's in the like Navy, the people that like the people poker brings together. I yeah. think is is it's fascinating. Navy's like that too, though. That was, that was, I mean, I'm just like, I guess I'm just drawn to like when, when I was in EOD, because it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a similar thing. Like it's a, to get into EOD, you have to be very driven. Like the, the, the pipeline's like two years and very high attrition. Like a lot of people fall out of it. And so it was just, um, when you finally become an EOD tech, like 
insane array of background of people. And uh, I just, I guess I just love things like that because poker's like that too, where really the one thing that I, especially for people who are successful, like the one thing that connects them all is they're just like very driven. Like they were just like committed. Like I'm just, I'm going to figure this really complicated, confusing thing out. And so I, I love, I love the people I've gotten to meet over the course of poker. Like I, it's like a, yeah, it's a great community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of convinced like about the community now, like, I don't think most of these people even play poker that are like talking about poker online or like talking on social media. Yeah. Like, I don't think these people have any idea what they're doing about <laughs> poker. I don't think these people are even qualified in the slightest to, <laughs> you know, what I, but they're so like, that is the opinion that you something like, but it's, I just find that funny now that I've been kind of like, cause I was kind of checked out for a bit. I'm like, I don't want to think about poker straight. I basically said, I thought about PLO in my dreams Yeah. because I'd play every day yeah, and yeah, yeah. like, you know, Dude, if you po wanna, poker dreams get scary. Right, dude. Like, you ever, you ever stop? You have poker dreams where like your cards change. You ever have that? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, everything. everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm playing a. I'm playing like the hand from my life in the, the yeah. dream. Like, oh, I got. I don't know. I didn't call the bluff. Like, oh, I can get thrown off a building. This is fascinating. I didn't know this about dreams. I didn't know that like signs and paper and stuff never are static. They ne in any dream. Anytime you like you look at a sign and you turn around, and you look back, it always will have changed. So I was always having dreams where I was playing live poker and I would like look at my cards and I'd like play a hand and then I look back and my cards are fucking different. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> but like yeah. I was forever, I was like, God, why do I have these dreams? And I found out like in dreams, it's just like a thing that mm -hmm. like, yeah, anyway. But yeah, I, yeah. I, when I was doing that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I, the only way I can stop doing this is I got to think about something else because yeah. I would just go back to poker too much. I wouldn't, mm. I wasn't really taking anything else seriously. Yeah. So once I said, okay, let me like put poker to the side. Let me focus more on learning about content and building a brand and that whole world and just kind of, you know, expanding my horizons in the media world. That was definitely right. I mean, that was, yeah, yeah. just change, change my life a little bit and then get it's, more into like, it's nice too. Cause when, then when you, like, if you get in, like, you know, I kind of recently stopped playing as seriously and it's, it was a nice transition too, because when I, when I go back to playing, it's just like so much more chill. Like mm -hmm. it's just like the stakes don't feel as high, not you new know, metaphorically, the metaphorical stakes don't feel as high. And like, it's just, you're doing it for fun now. And it's, and so it's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely gonna gonna play some of these content creators and and because uh, the thing about these content creators is like the, a lot of these guys seem like they got they got they got a lot of energy. So yeah, you know, I'm willing to test. I'm willing to battle. Like I love battling. I've always loved competing. And a lot of these you talking about Mr. Beast? You can play Mr. Beast heads up or something. <laughs> I'd love to play Mr. Beast heads up. Yeah, I'd love to play. I'm sure you do it. <laughs> I never know. I mean, listen, you never, you never know who played me heads up. Yeah. If I just start saying, I'll play, I'm going to play people heads up. You never know who's going to come up and play, want to yeah. play heads up. So uh, we, we should play heads up sometime. It'd be fun. I'm down. I'm yeah, down for anybody. Down, I yeah. want to play. Like I told, I told I'm Doug, I remember telling Doug, I want to play Doug, man. I want to yeah. play. Yeah. I want to battle against good players. I want to do it for content, do so, it on the side, do it for fun. I'm going to have a poker table at my place in Denver and mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's got RFID in it and, and I, ha I have cameras. I'm going to put up around it. You'll, you'll come play. We'll just play like a chill heads up match. It'll be yeah, fun. We'll do a little sparring match. Yeah, yeah I play deep stack though. I don't, I don't like the Yeah, we'll play, we'll play like 200 big blinds deep or something. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like I like kind of like where, you know, it start 100, then it gets deeper and then before you know it, you're... You're kind of, I, but also Rabbit Chow started it with Doug where they were just super deep. They yeah, they started deep and then 250. What do you prefer in that? Do you prefer like one table start a hundred or just like one table, try to run it up to the biggest you can. And then, uh, what do you mean? Like if we were playing a heads up match? Yeah. Like I, I would, I would prefer, BB, I, I think I'd prefer starting super deep. Yeah. It's just more, you, you, well, it expands the game tree bits. You play more four bet pots. You play more, you know, I don't know if you would play technically more, but you you have five, you have non all in five bets now, which is interesting. You play like non all in five bets bots, which mm -hmm. you know just I don't know. That sounds a bit more interesting. And I I mean I love putting in three hundred percent, five hundred percent bets. So mm -hmm. like the, so like the deeper we are, the better. Yeah, 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 okay, I'm, I'm taking note of that. I'm yeah, taking, maybe start a hundred. You know, yeah, maybe start at a hundred. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Get in there. I mean, I'm excited. Make make me excited though. Yeah, no, no, I would love to. I, I'm I'm not good at heads up, so I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. Dude, are you ready for? Uh, you want to play two truths and a lie? Uh, two truths and a lie. Got it. Okay, I need to. I need to think. I, I need to think of mine. Because <laughs> I have. I have one. But I was right when you were pulling up. I was like, oh shoot! I need to think of my two truths and a lie. The people who watch this are gonna get sick of hearing that because I. I do it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every episode. I'm like, oh fuck! I didn't think of anything. Uh, so just give me a second. Let's see. We'll cut this out anyway. Um, if I have, is it, it's hard. Have you, did you know, it was hard to think of these for me. It's like always difficult. I have to think of one for every new interview. 
It was a dumb idea. Well, I guess to play you got teacher. a lot. You got a lot to think about, yeah. Yeah, I have to think of new ones for two every single truths. And, well, they got, what are they supposed to be like? Interesting or funny? Sure, whatever. I mean, wh- one of mine against Kevin Rabichow was I once had to waffle stomp a poop down the down the drain while showering. <laughs> but that that was probably my my, mo- my most out of line. <laughs> two okay. truths and a lie. That was that was that was, right. but that was because Kevin and I are close friends, so I had to, I had to throw him off. <laughs> uh, it was hard with Kevin because because we're close friends. I feel like he was going to know whatever I, I said. So, mm-hmm. like, it was – we just knew each other too well. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that one. I'm going to do um, – Let's see if I wrote that one. Okay, that's a good one. Two – hold on a second. Okay, I have mine. Okay, one sec. So they can just be um, like facts too. Like they don't have to be like whole stories or anything. Pretty sure I'm at the right spot. I just got your text. (laughs) You are. You are at the right spot. (laughs) I'm coming up with some (laughs) room. Okay. All right, you ready? So how this is going to go is you're going to say your ones, I'll say mine, and okay. then we'll each get two minutes to kind of like question each other about okay. them to figure out which one we think is true, okay. and then we're both going to guess. I'm I, For the record, I'm truly terrible at this game. I've, okay. I've, I think I, I, I never played this game before. I, I, think, I, think, I, I think I've won once in, in these episodes, in the, all these episodes. I think I've won once, and then I've, I've, like, I've chopped a couple times, and then I've lost. I've been like swept all the other ones. Okay. So... Uh, so you go first. You say him. I got some help. I got some help here from my AI <laughs> for some potential ideas. So uh, all right, you, go but two it. of them are true, right? You can't get help from my two, AI. Two of them. I mean, the AI. The AI <laughs> knows things, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You're gonna read them. All right. All right. I uh, I once rode in a helicopter above Las Vegas. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see here. You gotta look at us. two. <laughs> These are things that are, are true or, or maybe not true. I once won. <laughs> That's how the a, game works. <laughs> I once won a car in a giveaway. Oh shit! Okay. Mm-hmm. And then three. I once went on a. Actually, it's runs out of line. Let me think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to wonder if that one's more likely to be true or lie. I once dated a uh, a girl that I met at the Playboy Mansion. Oh man. Who was who was Miss Cuba? For you, I hope that's true. <laughs> uh, let me okay let me let me okay let me tell you mine okay i um hang after i always forget one when i get to it so let me just <laughs> let me just let me just go through them again <laughs> before i say them okay. so it was that it was see now i'm forgetting the second one it was um shoot what was my second one? This is dull. Okay, hang on. I had that. Bro, use the AI. I know. I should. I should have written them down. I had a good one for my second one too. It was. Um... um... Okay, fuck. I'm just going to try to think of another one. Hang on. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, I'm just so bad at thinking of these. Um, Okay, okay. Okay, I'll do that one. And then I'll do... Okay. You ready? Uh, Ready. Okay. Okay. I was once like less than a second away from breaking the world record on uh, on uh, Banshee Boardwalk speed run Mario Kart 64. You were once what? A, like less than a second away from breaking the world record on Mario Kart 64. The course was Banshee Boardwalk. Okay. okay. I I uh, wow. once uh, shot a gun and. Uh, 
the bullet ricocheted and hit me in the head. <laughs> the wow. third, the third mm-hmm. one is I was once getting into parkour, and which is lame. But it, but you know we, we can't parkour change these parkour lame parkour. Have you uh-huh. seen that ESPN show? They're jumping around. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh. Well, that's cool. Okay, uh, so but, no, but but I was, but then I, I jumped off the the roof of a building thinking I could do a break fall okay. and, and broke my leg. So you broke your leg doing parkour. Yeah, doing parkour. And you uh-huh. shot yourself in the head with a bullet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I or you may have beaten the banshee. I was one second away. One second away, less than second one second away from banshee. All right. So now we each get two minutes. I'm going to question you first. So we get two minutes to question each other. Got it. All right. Um, I'm going to – okay, so let me recite yours before I start questioning you. It was – I'll never forget the last one. So you, you, you dated a girl you met at the Playboy Mansion, uh, helicopter around Las Vegas. You want a car and a giveaway. Mm-hmm. All right. What was the car? Toyota Camry. <laughs> what year? <laughs> Toyota Camry. Yeah, 2011. What was the giveaway? Uh, give away the casino, like uh, you put like your a, just a, like a reward drawing. program. I was my parents, yeah. Like a reward, and you were with your parents. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got me into casinos. They got me. They brought me to my first. Casino. Was it was it a special occasion for the helicopter ride? Um, kind of. Like I mean, like like did you do it for a special occasion or did you just do it? Well, it was a special occasion. Yeah, I was helicopter riding, taking me somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it was taking you somewhere. Taking. Where me was it taking you? Speedway. The Speedway. Speedway. Yeah. Okay. What was what's what's Miss Cuba's name? Uh, Sicily. Her, her name is Sicily. Sicily, that's, Mamacita. Con la mosca de la moto, yeah. That's a, that's a okay. What when when did that happen? When were you at the Playboy Mansion? Um, I don't know. 20, 2014, 2015, <laughs> something like that. Okay, so we I got, got like, so we, so we got so we got a 20, 28 year old Joey at the. I can buy it. I buy mm-hmm. it. You dated her? How long did you guys date? I don't know. Did it for a little bit. <laughs> for a little bit. Who broke up with who? Who ended it? Wasn't really like that. It was some, ah, that's fair. <laughs> Wasn't really like that. She, I met her. She lived in at the Playboy. She lived in L.A. I lived here. I lived yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So you went on some dates. It wasn't like you guys were in like an exclusive relationship. Mm-hmm. Man, you're making this tough. Toyota Camry. <laughs> uh, did what you did you did you keep the car for a long time? Did you give it? Did you? Did, what, no, I have I have a different I had a different car, but yeah, yeah, I didn't really. So you did you, you what did you do with the Toyota Camry? They still have it. Oh, you give it to your parents? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah. They still have it. Yeah. Do they like it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. All right. I don't know for the questions, but um, okay. I'm going to have to just contemplate that. All right. You get to question me. All right. So let me see that. Let me see that bullet wounded in the head. Uh, I don't have, I don't think I, have, I might have a scar. It's like, it's like right here. It didn't, it didn't like, it didn't, um, it wasn't that bad, but it did, it did hit me right here. You might be able to, I think there actually is a spot. I'm trying to remember exactly where, I think there actually is a spot where I don't grow what hair you anymore. you trying to remember where it happened? You don't, you don't remember where you got hit, shot in the fucking head? I'm what trying are you to, talking about? It was like right, it was what like, what are you talking about? It was about? like right here. Get out of here. Okay. Like right all right. Here. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was it? Broke the leg? Let me see. You got a scar on the leg or what? You walk with a limb? I don't limb have, I don't have a walk? scar. No, I don't want, I didn't walk with a limb. <laughs> you jumped off a building? It wasn't a compound fracture. It didn't break the skin. What does that mean? Compound fracture means the bone broke the skin. It didn't break the skin. And and why were you why were you a minute away from setting the record on Banshee Boulevard? <laughs> a second away. I was a second away. Oh, I was just got really into Nintendo sixty four into Mario when Kart on Nintendo sixty four. Let's see, I was I was like twenty two. So like, what year was that? I don't know. I was twenty two ish. Like, and I just where were you? You were in Denver. I was in Colorado Springs. Yeah, and me and my two friends, we got really. So we started with emulating. What two friends? <laughs> Andy and Jeff <laughs> are their <laughs> names. <laughs> and we got we got really into like emulating N64 on uh-huh. our computers and then and then I was uh playing Mario Kart a ton, like just an insane amount of Mario Kart. Uh-huh. And then got really into trying to set speed runs on Bar- Banshee Boardwalk and got really And close. then when you got shot in the head, where'd you go? <laughs> um no, so it was just it was it was like a what's they call it? superficial wounds. Like it, it I was bleeding a little but like uh, <laughs> I almost passed out. <laughs> Because it's it honestly it just it sketched me out. I had glasses on. I remember we were doing draws from the hip with pistol, and I remember drawing and firing, and immediately being like Ding, and just seeing blood <laughs> like down my glasses. And then um, it sketched me like I, I thought I thought I was dying. So like I was like, but my uh, <laughs> my my initial reaction was very exaggerated. It wasn't a very serious wasn't a very serious wound. Mm, okay, okay, my time's coming down. Yeah, here. your time's coming down. Perfect. All right. 
All right, so I'm going to guess. You fucked me out of this one with that answer right there. I'm going to be so tilted. <laughs> okay, so hang on. I, <laughs> I think you got me on this one. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. So hang on, I got to think. What I, do you think, chat? Do, what do you, what what do you think, chat? Think? Okay, I'm going I with. My chat. I wish the Legion was here right now to give me an opinion. Uh, I'm going to go with. I, 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 I'm going to go with car. I don't know. I'm going to go with the car giveaway. The car was correct. It's not, not real. It's not real. Yeah. Not something real. about the car. I don't I know what it was. I say, yeah. I didn't yeah. I don't car. know what it was, but something about the car just didn't vibe. Yeah. Yes, I win. Oh, I'm free rolling. I love this the feeling. Helicopter. Okay. I'm going to go with, um, the break in the leg. Yeah, the breaking the legs yeah, lie. Okay. Oh, damn, we chop. I, I never I win this. Them. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah, my, my answer on... I, I You know what's funny? I answered too well on the gun bullet one because, like, I had you that that was a lie. I should have kept being vague. Like, you're, like, struggling to pull up details and, like... Yeah, you were like, oh, yeah, I shot myself here. Yeah, look, I, I, I don't... I actually... I don't remember exactly where it was, but I do think I have a spot where hair doesn't grow in. My hair is too beautiful, so you can't tell, but... <laughs> but otherwise. Enjoy it, buddy, because eventually yeah. it's going to go gray like mine. Dude, like you're a silver fox. I didn't realize... Is it... That's your natural hair color? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it. Like, you're always wearing a hat. I know. Like, I basically started wearing... That's I don't know. sick, though. I think yeah. that's super cool that your hair is gray. Like, I would, I would, be, I would love to, to have gray hair. It used to be bright and vibrant like yours before Dude. I got into content and got abused on, <laughs> on YouTube and the internet. Like it's That that hair is, like, poker. so silver, though, that it looks like you dye it. That's, like, almost... That's cool. That's what a lot of people say. Yeah, yeah it except, looks like yeah. you dye it. Like, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I kind of like styling it sometimes, but normally I just wear Mohawk. hats. Go Mohawk. <laughs> no, I'm like too old. I'm like I don't. I put so when I walk around, I just like to be in my own world and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't like to like look at people and 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 that hair makes you stand out a bit. Yeah, if you got no hat on, like, and you're just you know, yeah. I feel like I get I get a lot of people that you know talk and stuff like that. So yeah. especially in Vegas, I walk around a lot. So I'm always yeah. that's fair. I just started wearing a hat and now I now I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, man. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Call it quits. Thanks for coming. Thank you.